Northern Nigeria is plotting to retain PAS as a social political group. And the 2023 Nigerian elections will not be business as usual. This is according to INEC. The electoral umpire has warned electoral offenders against electoral malpractices. This is Plus Politics, and I'm Kofi Bartels. You're welcome. We sincerely apologize for keeping you waiting. But we have a very interesting conversation and, of course, an interesting guest you'd like to listen to uh, standing by to join us at this time. Well, at a time when Northern leaders are divided over the issue of a consensus presidential candidates and leaders of certain social uh, political groups in the country, Afeni Ferre, the Pan Niger Delta Forum, Pan of and the Middle Belt Forum, as well as some leaders of these uh, groups, we have uh, Pa Ayo Adebanjo, uh, Chief Edwin Clark and Professor Beatrice Pogu, and now they have accused the northern part of Nigeria of plotting to abort the shifting of the power in the country at the presidency to the southern part of the country. Now, these groups are southern groups, and they decried the insincerity of or what they call the insincerity of northern leaders over the principle of zoning. It was stressing that after eight years of Muhammad Buhari's presidency, nothing short of zoning the presidency to the southeastern part of the country will resolve the restiveness in the country. I'm glad to say that uh, the spokesman or national publicity secretary of one of the groups uh, that released that, that statement, um, that's a pan Niger Delta Forum, joins us tonight on Plus Politics. Mr. Ken Robinson, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and uh, thank you to all of us, and good evening, Nigeria. And the world. Right. Okay. Um, it, it's quite um, um, remarkable, and so it's a landmark, that we have groups from prominent groups, the leading groups from the western part, the southwestern part of Nigeria, where you have predominantly the Yoruba community, uh, the the southeastern part of the country that was also represented at that meeting, uh, the Niger Delta part of the country and the Middle Belt, all coming together to say that power must go to the southeast. Now, this hasn't happened before now. What's the difference this time? We stand for justice, we stand for equity, and we stand for fairness. Some of the problems we are facing in Nigeria obviously are due to the, the absence of these issues in the conduct of government and in the running of affairs of state. And, and after uh, 24 years of democratic rule or civil rule, as some would like to call it, it is proper that we do what is right, that we shift base and um, perhaps uh, leave some of the things that we've done before, uh, the biases, the imbalances, and all the uh, unfairness that has been meted out to particularly the Southeast and, and, and minorities. Uh, we of the Niger Delta people uh, will be very unfairly treated. But politically, uh, we are saying that let the Southeast have a taste of the presidency of Nigeria, at least this time around. Very, very interesting. And, uh, yeah. position, I was going to add that our position purely based on uh, the need for equity and fairness and um, treating every part of Nigeria, giving every sense of, I mean, giving the sense of belonging to every part of Nigeria. All right. So, so uh, uh, some, some of the political parties, especially the two leading parties, have had uh, discussions around zoning. For instance, the uh, People's Republic Party set up a zoning committee led by the governor of Benue State, Samuel Otom, You've had discussions over zoning in the All Progressives Congress. And um, uh, uh, what we've been hearing before now is zoning between the North and the South. We've not had the parties talk specifically about the South. East. It's always between the North and the South. Shouldn't we keep it at that, at least for now? Even if zoning is not officially in the Nigerian constitution, but if it's a, yeah, an understanding, um, should, we, yes, should we not talk about a wholesale North versus a wholesale South? We, we, we are a country, and, and that's uh, what we are, and we, we think that things should be done rightly. And our position, I was saying, is based on the need to promote fairness, equity, um, and giving a sense of belonging to every part of Nigeria. Uh, we of the Niger Delta, we, we have been uh, very unfairly treated, but this time around we are saying, um, let us give a chance to the Southeast. Let us give a chance to the Igbos, and uh, let us see what 
difference they can bring to the table. Nigeria, as we speak today, some have said the country is broken. Some have said the country is direction, directionless. We, we have no direction. But, but we are a country, and everyone uh, needs to play his part to reposition this country and make us truly become uh, the great country that we are. And so let the Igbos have the opportunity to be president of Nigeria. That's what we're saying. And, and our, our brothers and sisters in the northern part of the country have enjoyed that privilege a lot of the period of our 62 years, uh, whether either under the military or democratic rule or civil rule. Uh, and in this present democratic dispensation, uh, President Mohamed Bari will be concluding his statutory eight years in, in 2023, May 29. And so we are saying let Nigerians for once uh, put down all other sentiments and promote fairness, empathy, and justice. All right. Uh, we, we, we've heard from the the um, leader of this Afenifere group uh, in recent times. Um, are, you, are, you, are you surprised about the position of this very, very prominent leader of the southeast or southwestern part of Nigeria, a prominent Yoruba leader, Pa'ayo Adebanjo, regarding the zoning of the president, especially at a time when it seems some of the leading contenders like Bola Metinbu and the incumbent vice president, Yemi Oshibajo, are from the southwest. I, I, you know, it, it's surprising to some. Uh, no, for, for some of us who have, um, have the privilege of working closely with Pahaya Adebanjo in the last uh, four, three years, four years or so, we, we, we know who he is. He's a man of uh, sterling character. He's a unique personality. And, and that's what is, is, is demonstrating. The fact that he has raised himself and elevated himself above um, ethnic uh, parochial sentiments at his way. Uh, looking at the fact that um, personalities in, in, the, in the persons of uh, Bola Mutinibu and the sitting vice president running who have Yorubas, and he has taken this very, very commendable position. Uh, but, but that is what it should be, and that's what we expect uh, some other persons in some other parts of the country, particularly northern and to come out categorically to say that. We, we, we call very, very, um, with, with gladness, in, in 2006 leading to 2007 elections, when Obasanjo was concluding his eight years as president. And there were moves in, in southern Nigeria by very some prominent and powerful persons in southern Nigeria to, to take over from, to succeed uh, President Felicia Obasanjo. Uh, Prominent people like, like Chief Edwin Clark at that time uh, supported that the next president at that time should also come, should, uh, there should be rotation and the presidency should go back to northern Nigeria. And they supported the margins of uh, Yaradua. And so we expect eminent and prominent uh, northerners and clerics in, in, the, in northern Nigeria to, to also speak out for, for the sake of unity, for the sake of uh, uh, cohesion and progress, and perhaps to doubt some of the uh, disaffections and tensions that we experience in the country across various parts of the country. Let us speak as a people. Uh, forget about where I come from first. It is it is doing the right thing at this time. At the right time. Okay. And uh, we we commend the position taken by our, our father and leader, Bayo Adebanjo. And, and of course, don't forget also the position of the Middle Belt Forum, um, uh, led by Dr. Beatrice Kobu, uh, and and it's, it's commendable that it could, the, the, the middle bed forum could take this position, not minding that they are actually also not that. But the scope is from Borobu State, I just let you know. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Uh, um, th this, this Greater Nigeria Conference uh, um, um, initiative of uh, an Igbo think tank called um, Unzuko Umuna, you know, you all came together as groups from different parts of the country and you said Southeast must produce the, the next president of Nigeria. Um, Mr. Ken Robinson, as far as Pandev is concerned, when you say Southeast, which states in Nigeria are you referring to? There are six geopolitical zones in the country. Uh, and, and Southeast is um, uh, explicit. Um, where there, there are Igbos outside of the Southeast, that's not deniable. Um, but what we're saying is Southeast, and it's left for the Igbos to decide whether their brothers and sisters in other states within um, Southern Nigeria will also be part of what we are talking about. Okay, so, so you, you're saying Southeast, but you're also saying that there are Igbos outside of the Southeast. No, what I said is that Southeast is explicit. There are six geopolitical zones in the country. And we're saying 
let the presidency of Nigeria uh, in 2023 come from the southeast. That's the position that was ex uh, expressed very clearly. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, just for the record, the purposes of the record, the, the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum have uh, since last year, uh, I remember in, 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 on, the, on the 30th of May last year, 2021, we had a meeting in Abuja here at the Sharatin Hotel, and our position uh, was, was voiced at that time that power shifts should go to, uh, to Southern Nigeria. But what, what, what happened on, on Monday, this last Monday, was, was capping it to say, look, Yes, we're saying power shifts to southern Nigeria, but specifically, perhaps, the EU should be given some uh, uh, preference. All right. Um, uh, uh, so, so I'm sure I would have asked what changed, but I'm sure all the things that you've already said will, will constitute the answer to that. Um, so, so we have, and I've had, you know, uh, several conversations about this issue from a couple of years back with different personalities and leaders of you know, groups including Ohane Zendibo, even factions of Ohane Zendibo. And um, there is a school of thought that says, you shouldn't say Southeast. You should say Ndigbo, that we have Ndigbo spread across different parts of the country, uh, only divided or kept out of the Southeast because of the act of man by simply drawing the maps. So you have Igbo in Delta State. You're very aware, well aware of that. I shouldn't bore you. We have Igbo in Cross River State. We have Igbo in Benue State. We have Igbo in Akwaibom State. We have Igbo in River State. Um, should these members of the Igbo tribe be denied the right to at least represent their kinsmen if they have the opportunity and the experience and the know-how to be the next president of Nigeria? Um, Kofi, let me restate what I said earlier. And incidentally, I'm the acting coordinator of the South and Middle Belt Leaders Forum. Uh, that's the position our uh, dear late brother, Yinka Ogumake, used to play. And the leaders um, gave that responsibility to me uh, in March this year. And I'm saying this. There are six geopolitical zones in the country. Northwest, Northeast, North Central, uh, Southwest, South, South, and Southeast. For the purposes of fairness, the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum is saying, let us consider the Southeast. That is our statement. We are not explaining it. And uh, we, we, we are very clear and we, feel, we think that all Nigerians understand where the Southeast is and what constitutes the Southeast. Now, if the Igbos agree amongst themselves that they want to that position to any of their brothers and sisters or, bro or sisters outside of the Southeast. That's a decision the Igbos have to make. But for us as a people, as leaders of ethnic nationalities, and who believe, who are asking for fairness from the Nigerian state, we have also demonstrated fairness to, to our brothers in the Southeast. That's what we have done. And, and we hope that the rest of Nigeria will see what we're seeing and act as required. All right. So, so Pandev, um, and indeed the South and Middle Belt uh, Leaders Forum is saying that if you're an Igbo from the South South, you cannot, you will not be supported. You should not be the president of Nigeria. So you're saying uh, Rotimi, Chibika, Mechi, Minister of Transportation, and Ezeo Yenson Wike, Governor of River State, should not contest for that position in the spirit of fairness. That's what you're saying as a group. That's not what we're that's not what we're saying. Okay. What we, we have said is clear, and uh, I repeat again for the third time. Let Nigeria give preference to the Southeast. The South South, the Southwest, in Southern Nigeria, have produced president. Now, as an individual from South South, and Pandas, specifically as an organization, had made comments and releases to the fact that, look, there are sentiments in the South South, that uh, former President Bullock Jonathan did not complete his statutory eight years. And so we could not, at some point, underplay or undermine or ignore, ignore those sentiments. Those sentiments are real that uh, Jonathan spent five years in office and uh, the second term bid was truncated and he lost the election, a considered defeat to uh, President Muhammad Buhari. 
So those sentiments are there. But for the purposes of equity, fairness, and justice, of the six geopolitical zones in the country, is the southwest, southeast rather, that has not produced a president in this particular dispensation and in dispensations before. All right. The northwest had Prime Minister Tafa Balawa. The northeast has, has produced a lot of presidents, Shon Shagari, um, okay. Umaru I Musa mean, Yaradua, and of course, President Libuari. And, and the southwest had uh, Chief Olishin Go Basinger. The South South had five years of uh, President Goodluck Jonathan. As ethnic nationalities that project and protect the interests of the people and clamor for justice, equity, and fairness, we are demonstrating what we are asking for. Okay, M Mr. Robinson, yes. we, we, we have to go. Uh, I'm, I'm very glad that uh, you answered the last question, which was to be on Dr. Goodluck Jonathan. You, so you, as a uh, Niger Delta, uh, your leaders, even Chief Edwin Clark is saying that Jonathan should forget about the presidency for now. Um, I, I want to thank you for your time, Mr. Robinson. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right. Ken Robinson is a National Publicity Secretary of the pan Niger Delta Forum and, of course, uh, the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum as well. And he's just given us a position um, in no uncertain terms. It's still Plus Politics. Thanks for staying with us. We'll now take a short break. When we return, INEC warns electoral offenders to have a rethink during the 2023 general elections. Professor Sukhoi joins us in a jiffy.